Some of the most wonderful things that I remember from my youth and still when I go out to eat a restaurant are soups. A soup well done is worth a thousand words. Uh, this is a variation a little bit on uh, corn chowder, truffle oil, crab. Ooh, this is great. I want to show you exactly how to make a wonderful elegant soup. We have some olive oil already heating up here in the pan and to this we're going to add the beginning of our ingredients which is uh, uh, chopped shallots. I'm going to put them in there. Together with the shallots, we're going to add some kernel of corn. Now, you can use them nice and fresh, as you just taking it from a nice, wonderful ear of corn. Even frozen will work. Mm, soften up the shallots just a little bit, bring out a little bit of their wonderful aroma. Here we go with the corn. And this is the part I love to do the most, and that is tossing it. Well, of course, I'm working with a wok, but uh, if you're working with a nice uh, uh, soup, uh, <laughs> soup uh, pan at home, this is not the type of thing that you would like to do. Now, what we're doing right now, we're mixing all the flavors together just uh, to make sure a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. I'm going to increase the heat to a high here because the next addition that we're going to do is sherry. Why do I like sherry? Um, sherry has a nice sweet taste to it, already adds up a lot to the sweetness that's natural to the corn and also brings out a wonderful base to what it is that we're about to do next. What we want to do is mingle all these flavors together and create the base for what ultimately will be our soup. And I will show you exactly how to make the soup very elegant, very smooth, ooh, very restaurant-like. Here we go with our sherry. Stir this about. Keep mixing it until the sherry starts completely evaporating and almost glazing the containers in the pan. And then we go with chicken stock. This is the ideal type of stock that you'll want to use. When you cook this at home, bring this to a boil. Once it reaches a boil, reduce it down to a simmer. What I like to do when I simmer it is to keep it covered. I like the steam to go on top, then go back down again, and on a soft, elongated amount of time to really bring out all the basic flavors which are at the root of all these ingredients that we've added. But this is not yet what we are going to be. After about, I would say, 40 minutes of doing this, what you want to do is to actually take this soup and uh, put it into a food processor or a blender as we have it. And come over here because this part is, is very important. Many times when people use a blender or a food processor, they just give it a couple of twists like this and they say it's done. No, what you want to do in this particular case, you really want to break the fiber. You really want to break, remember the corn, for as sweet as it is, it has a, a little husk around each one of the kernels. Maybe I'm not using the correct word. The skin, it's very difficult to break. You want to really mangle it as much as possible. Yes, you want to incorporate all the flavors that you have in here, but really what you want to do is make sure that a lot of this uh, texture is broken down. Once you've done this, the next thing that you want to do is to actually strain it and put it through again into a saucepan. Now, the straining part of it, it's not easy. Well, not it's not easy, it's actually a very simple step. But the part that you should be aware of it is that uh, um, there's still a lot of uh, bulk, mass left behind it. So you need to prepare yourself with a tool, you know, a nice uh, spatula to have it handy. And I'll show you in just a moment exactly what I mean. Here is uh, uh, a saucepan that already contains some of the soup that I've done before. I'm just going to add some of this. Once you get to it on the strainer, you need to push it through. You need to work it through and you see it coming down. And when you do it, push hard against the wall of the strainer. This does two things, breaks up even more of the pulp that's left behind and what part of the pulp is yet unbroken is ultimately what you are going to be able to push through and you see how much of this is left and you continue and you will be left with this. In Italian we call la feccia, the leftover. This has no longer value for us. Uh, in order to make this very elegant, what you want to do is completely get rid of it and that's exactly what we'll do. Now, you do this for all the amount that is left into the uh, um, blender as we did in this case or the food processor if that's the machine of choice that you have at that point. You're going to bring this once again to a boil. Once it reaches a boil, there are two other elements that we want to make sure we have. Right now, we don't have any cream. I like to have a little bit of cream added to this just to add some great silkiness to it. And believe it or not, a little bit of sugar. We already have a wonderful sugar flow in here. 
and this is what we're going to do it. Stir it around, bring this to a boil on a soft, medium heat, and then reduce it once again to a simmer until the consistency of this goes right down to where we want to have it. The next thing that I want to show you is the topping that will go on top of this. The topping is a wonderful uh, assembly of great ingredients. We have crab, fresh crab of course, and uh, together with that we have uh, a little bit uh, of greens and red pepper flakes. Uh, greens of course in this case being chives. Uh, I said the red pepper flakes but I meant uh, red peppers which we diced very very fine. So to the hot butter what we're going to do, we're going to add the red peppers. Why cutting them fine, uh, so finely diced as I'm about to show you now? There is a purpose to it. One is truly decorative. The other wine, just as important, is that we want them to really almost melt quite quickly because once I do add the, uh, 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 the fresh crab, we want it to turn, twist quickly. We want it to reheat through but not to cook through. The crab is so wonderful in its natural state that if you cook it all the way through, if you try to grill it as you would uh, uh, a piece of salmon or a steak, you would actually ruin the quality of it. So the soft heat, this quick interaction that we're going to have with our ingredients is very important. So here we go. We put some of these guys right in here. As soon as they start to cook, you see the bubbles of the butter that are starting to come from the bottom we're going to add the chives. The chives, you want to add them at this point because you want them to kind of start melting into the butter, infusing the butter with the aroma that makes them so powerful. Spread this around a little bit. It's not like if you spread it around like this, it's going to make it taste better, but it gets you interacting with food in a way that just makes it taste better. In anticipation, I would like to believe that is. Next thing we go is with our crab. And you don't want to break it down in uh, small pieces. You just want to put it in there, whatever can be done, like this. Look how fresh it is. The last thing that you're going to do is a little bit of brandy. Now be careful with the brandy because it could actually flame up. So here we go. I'm going to let this cook until all the alcohol evaporates away from the brandy. And as the alcohol evaporates from the brandy, you're left with this warm through butter mixture. There's big pieces of this, just crank it down a little bit. You don't want to cut them too fine, you just want to have them because later when I assemble it for you, you will see exactly how gorgeous this is. Uh, now, what I want you to do is to stay tuned because when I'm going to come back, I'll show you exactly how to assemble this soup, which you can use as a soup or actually as an entree. And you'll see exactly how wonderful it is once I add my secret ingredient. That is, by the way, truffle oil. So I'll be right back. Now, I want to put this together for you because it's my masterpiece. Now, what we've done, we've chosen a nice square uh, bowl. I like it, you know, it's design oriented. I put a, a cookie cutter or a biscuit cutter in the middle just to help me create mound. I'll show you exactly what I mean with that. The uh, crab that we sauteed right at the closing before, I'm gonna put it on the inside. Now the crab has all these wonderful ingredients to it, the red peppers, the chives, the butter, the brandy. Let's not forget about the brandy. I'm gonna pack it nice and tight on the inside, but still keep it in here because we're going to do the adding of the soup. I had the soup uh, warming up here. Mm, it's rolling nicely. Turn it off. Ah. Oh, I love this. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to add it all the way around. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> this is exciting. I feel like I'm my own restaurateur. Next thing we do, very carefully, you take this out. And most importantly, the truffle oil arrives. And the truffle oil puts out a flavor into this dish, which is divine. Just drizzle a little way and a little bit goes a long way. You will be totally surprised. And if you want to, a little bit of fresh chives. And uh, oh, it's gorgeous. There it is.